In County Meath, Ireland, there's a place called New Grange. From a distance, New Grange looks like a slight rise on the horizon, not unlike Turkey Mountain here in Tulsa, except smoother and more symmetrical. As if the earth herself were five or so months pregnant in that one eastern spot of Ireland, just north of the River Boyne. But Newgrange isn't a mountain or a hill. It's a passage tomb built by men in the year 3200 before the birth of Christ, which makes it older than the pyramids, even older than Stonehenge. The tomb or mound has two entrances. In the middle of last night, early morning in Europe, 100 people entered the earth through its front entrance, walked through a long internal passageway into the complete darkness of the inner chamber. They were repeating a ritual which has taken place for the last 5,000 years of human history. Once inside, they waited to watch and feel the light from the solstice sunrise stream through an opening in the roof. They stood inside this rounded belly of the earth and let the light shine down upon them for 17 minutes until the Earth's rotation brought them back into darkness. Solstice, from the Latin sol and sistere, means sun stands still. In the great Inca Empire, in the Andes Mountains of Peru, at this same time of year, in the 13th century AD, some 4,400 years after Newgrange was built, Incan priests used to climb a very large column of stone in order to rope and secure the sun and thus hold it hostage. Deep in the human psyche lies the promise and the power of the light's return. Embedded in our consciousness and in our genes is the collective and repeated experience over thousands of years of inevitable, inevitable death and triumphant life reborn. Of course, now in the 21st century, not many of us climb tall columns of stone to hold the sun hostage. But that's in part because we found other ways to remind ourselves of the reassuring return of the sun. In fact, unlike our ancestors, in the last hundred years or so, we scarcely let darkness descend at all. At home, I have strands of white lights in the kitchen, red lights in the living room, and multicolored lights on the decorated evergreen tree we bought and brought indoors. A nightlight in the bathroom and street lights outside my window assure and ensure that I can avoid the discomforts of darkness and the suspicious shadows which take shape as the lights fade away. And many religious traditions reinforce this idea that the dark is dangerous, including our own liberal religious one. Fed and nourished by the powerful river of enlightenment thinkers, we tend to revere and rely on reason and the bright power of the intellect to pierce through the murky, dark waters of superstition and sorcery, magic, and miracles. And when you see signs like the one I saw recently in Tulsa, it's easy to understand why we insist on rational and reasonable religion. If you cut off God's light, you'll be sitting in the dark with the devil. But what of my friend Sam, the artist in Santa Fe who spent a year in a cave in the mountains of Colorado after his return from Vietnam? 
in order to heal his mind and his spirit before he could rejoin conventional, non-combat society. We know, but it's so easy to forget in our electrified and electronically active atmosphere that we also need to retreat and to rest, to be renewed. Without sleep, we lose our minds, get sick, and eventually die. Without a day of rest, a religious or secular observance of a Sabbath, our productivity lowers and we burn out quickly. Many of us self-regulate with caffeine and alcohol and push through. But without a fallow season, soil becomes depleted and healthy crops won't grow. We know seeds sprout and grow in the dark. And we also know that sometimes there just isn't any light. Which is why I want to understand where healing comes from then. To understand the mysteries of the underworld where Demeter spends her winters. To feel familiar with the contours of the bottom the addict hits before he begins his long ascent to recovery. Because I know healing does come, even or maybe even especially when we let go and let ourselves descend where we've never been before. In one of her stories, Rachel Naomi Renman describes a man who is raging at his cancer and its treatment. She asks him what he thinks he needs for his healing, and he snaps back at her nothing. Taking his statement at face value, she asks him to describe nothing. Unending darkness. Feeling the power of his own image, he continued, the darkness is all around me. I'm not falling, it holds me. I'm held in darkness, wrapped in darkness. The darkness is soft, almost tender. It's safe here. I needed to feel safe. I haven't relaxed since I got the diagnosis. I can rest. I'm so tired. No pain here. No hunger. No need. Dr. Remen writes, as light represents the archetype of masculine energy, darkness suggests the power of the feminine. And it makes intuitive sense that the experience of healing may be associated with darkness. Darkness is a condition of the beginning. Some people may find healing in remembering the beginning. With our outward eyes as our guide, light gets all the glory of the season. But ask any pregnant woman if she wants her baby to come early. And despite the back pain and the difficulty bending over to put on her shoes, she'll say, no, the baby isn't ready yet. The eyelashes, maybe, but not the fingernails. The kidneys, yes, but not the lungs, not yet. The ears are formed, but we must wait for the eyes. Please leave the child in darkness for a little while longer. The power of the solstice points us toward a reality in which darkness is no longer feared, but is once again revered as fertile ground for new life. Because periods of darkness are part of the planetary and solar systems in which we live and have our very being, a simple way to do this if you'd like to join with me this season and explore the mysteries of the dark, is to shift your awareness to the night and to your dreams in the eight or nine days left in 2012. If you're curious about the truths that lie hidden deep within you, before you fall asleep in the coming days, take a moment to carefully turn off as many lights as you can or dare to in your own home. Sit in the safety of the unending darkness. Look into it, feel it, don't fear it. As you close your eyes to sleep, ask what seeds are lying dormant within you now, waiting 
just for the right moment in time to break through their shell and grow. Set an intention to remember your dreams and if and when you do, write down what you remember, even if it's in the middle of the night, especially if it's in the middle of the night. And let these words of the poet Raina Maria Rilke sink deep inside and settle into the mysteries of your own depths this morning. You darkness that I come from, I love you more than all the fires that fence in the world. For the fire makes a circle of light for everyone, and then no one outside learns of you. But the darkness pulls in everything, shapes and fires, animals and myself. How easily it gathers them, powers and people. And it is possible, a great presence is moving near me. I have faith in nights.